Hello and welcome to the Biopharma Finder training video. In this video I'm going to show you our new workflow for top-down analysis. On the screen you'll see the Biopharma Finder 3.0 software. You'll see that we have the peptide mapping workflow, intact analysis workflow, and now we have a top-down analysis workflow. So if we click on the top-down analysis you'll see the home page for the top-down workflow. And this looks similar, almost the same, as the peptide mapping and intact uh, workflow. So here what we're going to do in this example is I'm going to show you how we can look at the truxuzumab antibody. And it's going to be an IDES digest. We're looking at the light chain, the FD, and the FC. And for the first example, we're going to look at one ETD fragmentation raw file. So to begin, we're going to name our experiment, and we can um, name this uh, whatever you'd like to help you uh, do your experiment. So we're going to say IDES, and this is going to be ETD. So I'm going to browse for my raw file. And in this example, I'm just going to bring in one raw file. So I'll just select one, and uh, in another video, I'll show you how you can process all of these files and you can actually compare the results from um, each one of these files in a multi-consensus report. So let's just select one for now. I'm going to choose the protein sequences. Now I'm not going to show you how I generated these. That will also be in a different video. So you want to look for how to generate your protein sequences for top down in another video as well. So I'm going to select all three of them. So this is the light chain, the FD and the FC. And I'm going to pick our default top-down method uh, to begin. Start processing. <clears throat> For the top-down workflow, uh, you're going to define your peaks. And each peak will then be deconvoluted. And the deconvoluted MSMS spectral will be sent to the ProSite engine. And the, the search results will be returned to the software. And that's what you'll display. So in this case, when we look at the uh, IDES digest for Truxuzumab, we know that the first peak is the FC, we know the middle peak is the light chain, and we know that the third peak is the FD. So what we're going to do is we're going to define that in the software. So the first thing, I like to do this by dragging across the chromatogram, and you want to make sure that you're in the averaging mode uh, to do that, or you can just type in the uh, red space over here if you want to type a specific time range. So to begin, I'm going to drag my mouse across this peak and it's going to uh, let's make it just a little bit bigger there we go and it's going to average uh, the time range so you can actually see what the actual time range is right here and the software will go through and it will read the scan headers within that time range now in this specific raw file we had one um, targeted MSMS at mass to charge 900 and the ETD um, was set to 15. So that's the uh, scan header that it's going to select. Now if there were multiple scan headers in that time window you could change it and choose a different one. Also uh, the top-down workflow in Biopharma Finder does not require a uh, intact full scan. However if you have that scan type you can select this checkbox and then you can actually do a full scan deconvolution or an intact deconvolution as well. So for the top, we're just going to do fragmentation. Now the software um, is going to read uh, the f activation type from the scan header, and it's going to automatically populate it. This information gets passed off to the ProSite engine, and if you'd like to change it, you can, uh, but it should uh, get it right on the f uh, when it automatically reads it. When you have multiple files, this little box right here will, will be activated, and you'll be able to review the scan headers for all the different files. So then um, the next step, and it's nice in the software how the red boxes kind of show you what you need to do, the next step will be to actually pick the protein sequence. So we know that this is actually the FC, and this is going to be the mass tolerance for the searching. Now, one nice thing um, is you can move these windows around on this page, and it's also floatable. So if you're running into space problems, you can uh, rearrange everything so you could see uh, the windows better. The software's designed for each peak has its own deconvolution parameters. 
So if we, if we see peak one, that's what we're working on, peak one over here, peak one, to kind of keep you oriented so you don't get lost. Uh, and we're going to talk about the intact fragmentation parameters. And right now we're going to use extract. This is the mass range. This is the display output range for the deconvolution. These are the deconvolution parameters that it's going to use. And if you want to look at the advanced, you can enable the advanced button and everything will be shown over here. So um, if you want to change these parameters, you can. And then when you add a new peak, it will remember that you've actually made a change. So um, one thing you might want to do is adjust the signal to noise threshold. You could raise or lower this value. Uh, if you have a lot of noise, you can um, put a little bit of uh, thresholding on, on the actual uh, software to, to get rid of some of the noise. But you can zoom in and see that this is a very clear and uh, very nice um, MSMS vector. So I'm going to actually keep it set to the default settings. Um, you can also uh, uh, change these parameters in the real-time optimization. In the end, once you're in, uh, you have the results already generated, just like you can do in the other uh, workflows. So you can always go back and, and adjust that. Okay, so now that we have this, let's do the same for peak two. So I'm simply going to draw, um, oops, actually I made a mistake. This is good because I, I make this mistake often, and so that'll be good to show you uh, how you can make this mistake. Okay, so, so this is peak, and what's nice about the software is, is the visuals that the, um, that the development team did is that I knew that it was the same peak because the, the shading color box didn't change. So let me show you. So I was still in peak one. Now I need to add another peak. So add another peak, okay? And so now you can see I'm on peak two. And now draw your box. And it's gonna be a different color. So visually, you know, if you're moving your red box around, you need, you're not doing the right thing. Um, so it's, it's quite nice uh, what they did there. So, so now I'm on peak two. Uh, so now let's select that is the light chain and add a peak. So we can go after peak three and the peak three is going to be a different color too. So it's, it's yellow. And so now let's uh, select that. That's the FD. So if we, we can review this, so this is the FD and this is the light chain and then this is the fc and that's it that's all you have to do um, you can assign up to 10 peaks in this window and you can have up to 10 different raw files in um, a multi -cons comparison um, or multi consensus consensus experiment so let's go next and for this um, the identification tab if i've made a mistake for my sequences or i forgot to put something in or or whatever, I want to make a change, you can do it here. Um, if you do make a change, you'll need to go back and reassign those identifications uh, to each peak because if you've, if you've eliminated something or you've added something new, you need to make sure it's associated with a peak. So let's go to our uh, save. And you have to rename your, um, your default methods. And so you can give it a name. Now, one thing that's nice in the software too is you can export out these parameters. So if you wanna keep track of what you've done and it shows you the global parameters and then it'll show you each individual peak. So you can keep track of that as well. So once we hit finish, the experiment's automatically added to the queue and it'll uh, do the deconvolution. So, so in this case, we have three different peaks. So it's going to deconvolute the MSMS spectra for the three different peaks, and then it sends those results to ProSight. The engine does the searching, and then it gets back the results. And you'll see that it's quite quick. Um, it, it took very little time to process this experiment, and it automatically saves the, the um, experiment, so you don't have to worry about saving it. So you can double click, or you can open results. I'm double clicking to open up the results. And so now we're looking at the process and review page uh, for, for our experiment. So the layout of this page, there's a lot of information. Um, again, you can move the windows around uh, depending on what you want to try to look at. But you want to think about peaks as well. Um, so let's, let's look down here into the results table. So we have peak 1, peak 2, and peak 3. And our chromatogram over here shows our, our different peaks. And everything's interactive. So when you click on the different rows in the, in the um, table, you'll get interactiveness with the, it, with the graphics up above. 
um, so again, think peak level first. So let's go to um, a simple one. Let's go to the light chain because the light chain doesn't have any um, proteiform. So let's talk about that one first. And then I'll show you as we go down, get the basics, and then we'll go look at the FC because that has the glycans and it has, we searched up to seven uh, proteiforms for that one. Okay, so let's start with the light chain. So expand this first level. And in this case, it's proteiforms and we only have one proteiform. So if we click at that level, you're going to see an annotated MSMS uh, deconvoluted spectrum. Okay, so there's your annotated uh, deconvoluted spectrum. The uh, chromatogram just shows us what peak we're talking about, so we can scooch that over right now. We can see this. Here's the source spectrum. So this was the source spectrum that got deconvoluted here, and then this information was sent to Prosite. It got searched, and it came back with the labels here, the um, the map here, so you see the protein, uh, the protein coverage map here that you're probably very used to seeing in ProSite. And then um, you also get a tabular form of that in the um, ProSite BP output. So this is a tabular form of everything you see here and also on the map. And what's nice about this is you can filter. So there's filtering, there's sorting, and you can kind of get a good feeling of what's actually happening in a, in a tabular way. Um, you can right click and export everything. Uh, you have different levels of exporting in here as well. Uh, so don't forget this is here and it, it corresponds to this. Okay, so if you have multiple raw files, so there's one more level in this table, and in this case we only have a single file, so we don't really need to go down to that level, but if you have multiple files, you can go down to that level. So we'll just uh, stay on, on the proteoform level at this, at this point. And all of the um, information of what you matched and, and what your coverage is and all the um, data you get back is in the table, so you might have to scoot over to be able to see it all. And um, on, the cut, on the map, you can actually hover over the fragments and the information will pop up to tell you which one it is. And you could also double click and a box will pop up and give you a little bit more information as well. Sometimes what I like to do is take this one out. Now when I float the windows in here, I'm holding onto this window with my left mouse button. And you can see when I drag it around, it gives me these little things on where I might wanna put it. And so I'm gonna to choose to put it right under here uh, for, for this. And then I can maybe sort by intensity and say, okay, well, did I get the most intense ions, right? So it just gives you a different way to look at things. Or if you want a confirming ion, let's say you want to look at this one, it's, um, what was it, C83, and you could, you could say C38, or what was it, 83 maybe? There we go. And then we can expand this, and we can see what charge states um, were used in the deconvolution to confirm that fragment. So if you need to go back to the MSMS spectrum, there's a source spectrum, you can actually go back to the source spectrum and you can find this to confirm that, that, you know, that the, the diisotope cluster looks correct for that charge state. Uh, so you can, you can go back and, and double check your data and, and make sure that you, you don't have to um, go to Qual Browser or Freestyle to look at your answers. Hopefully you're able to do it all in, in the software. So it should all be right here at your fingertips. Okay, so, um, this is a simpler one. Um, now let's look at the FD. So the FD will be the same. Um, and it will take it just a second to refresh. Okay, so here's our FD. Oops, I have a filter on. Um, let me show you a trick actually. So, so I had a filter on in this table, right? I had this filter here and I'm not seeing anything. And so if there's a filter that you can't see, maybe there's something back here that you weren't able to, to know that was actually on, there's a little button right here that allows you to clear the filters. So if you push this, it resets all the filters. And that's true in all of our tables now. So just look for that little reset button and it'll help you um, reset the columns uh, so you don't get caught up in um, not seeing what's actually happening. Okay, so we're looking at, and the other thing that's nice um, that the team did in here is you're on peak three, and so it'll tell you up here, peak three, there's the raw file. Um, this will tell you peak three, and this will tell you peak three. Now at the peak level, you're not gonna see um, any labeling 
because when you have multiple files and multiple proteoforms, it gets very confusing as to what you're actually looking at. But when you go down to the proteoform level, then you'll actually start to see the fragments and you also see the annotation on the deconvolution spectrum.